Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to St Luke's and Christchurch. Thank you for joining us and as ever please do pass on this video to anyone who you think may value it. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Here ends the reading.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Waiting is an activity that, in ordinary times, most of us spend a good portion of our lives doing. We wait for the tube, for the bus, or at the airport. We wait at the school gates. We wait with expectation for an event or a new job. And in a world where having impact is all important, waiting can feel like a frustrating break on that progress. A break that we may choose to avoid if we can by, if we can, by arriving at the school gates just in time, or by paying to go to the front of the queue. Our experience of 2020 may have been upsetting for many reasons. Among them, however, may well be the frustration of finding our year's planned impact and achievement limited. In the midst of this second lockdown, it may well feel to us that life is on hold, or even going backwards. We are waiting, and that is frustrating. We have more opportunity to think about the value of waiting each Advent, a traditional time of waiting for the celebrations of Christmas. And indeed, this year our Advent course will focus on the theme as we will be reading Paula Gooder's wonderful short book, The Meaning is in the Waiting. More details in next week's email. But in today's Gospel reading, we miss an essential clue to our parable's meaning if we forget that Jesus is telling a story about a time of waiting. For the parable of the talents is the third of a short series of stories that Jesus tells his disciples, and they are told in Matthew's Gospel to help the earliest Christians understand how they should live in the time between Jesus' resurrection and his second coming. This, crucially, was expected to be a short time within the lifetime of most of those first followers of Jesus who may even have heard him preach and seen him heal in person. The parable of the talents is the moment when Jesus tells his disciples, you have been with me and now I, the master in the parable, am giving you, the slaves, the gifts of my kingdom. Some of you may receive two talents worth, the Spirit's gifts of wisdom, healing, repentance, and so forth. Some of you may receive five talents, great gifts like shaping communities in the image of Christ and bringing forgiveness and reconciliation into situations of great pain. And some of you may receive one talent, your everyday gifts of Jesus, like baptism, the Eucharist, reading of scripture and personal prayer. But, and this is crucial, even those of you with just those basics have received an amazing gift. After all, the one talent that the master leaves with his slave is the equivalent of 20 years pay for an average labourer. So in this period of waiting before I return, Jesus tells his disciples, make use of the amazing gifts you have received. Recognise that in prayer you can open your whole heart to God and find that he opens his whole heart to you. Realise that reading scripture invites you into a constant discovery of God's character and a revelation of the way God has already redeemed the world. Discover that the Eucharist is a meal where all kinds of people can gather, united in faith. You disciples have followed me round. You now have all you need to live lives that speak of God's life. How can you not use those gifts? And if you don't, Perhaps you can understand my frustration when you choose not to. 
The parable of the talents addresses first and foremost those earliest Christians waiting for Jesus' return. Yet we, 2,000 years later, may still find riches in it. We need to avoid, though, the ways of understanding this parable that are not helpful. It is from this parable, after all, that we have gained the word talent to mean our gifts of singing, or sewing, or skipping. But if we think of talents in this way, we can end up in all sorts of difficulties. We might find ourselves thinking back to our primary school peers and trying to work out whether we have been the good slaves who have grown our talents more than those we first grew up with. Or we end up with the problem of imagining Jesus as an expectant God who has sent us into this difficult world with a set of gifts and is now waiting on his throne to judge whether we have made good use of them. But that is to miss the good news of this parable. Jesus is not the awkward investor, judging whether we, the investment manager, are giving him a good return on his investment. Instead, we have been granted an amazing gift. It is the pearl of great price. Even if we feel that our faith is shaky, that we don't have much to offer, we have been given the talent of true life of God's Spirit, of prayer, of the Bible, of the Eucharist. To turn two talents into four, or one into two, means that we enjoy this gift and end up looking more like Jesus. So these in-between times we live in, before the creation of a new heaven and new earth, need not feel like waiting with fear before Judgment Day. If they feel like waiting at all, they should feel more like the waiting heralded by this week's wonderful news of a possible COVID vaccine, a waiting that is marked by hope that we will soon enjoy a better future. And in God's grace, we have the gift we need to see us through the times we live in now. Like yeast in dough, that gift wants to grow. In his victory speech this week, Joe Biden recalled his Catholic grandfather encouraging him each time he left their house, keep the faith. And his grandmother, Biden remembers, would chip in, no, Joey. Spread it. Spread the faith. We wait with hope. And in the meantime, we can enjoy the amazing talent that God has given us. We need not bury it away. Instead, we can let it mould our lives and spread beyond us to enrich others and change this world. Amen.
things come from you, O Lord, and of your own do we give you. Help us, we pray, to give, not hoard or hide the gift of your mercy and your love. For it is not ours alone, but an unearned bounty that grows only if it is shared. In a world today darkened by future uncertainties and present fears, and a senseless suspicion of the other, help us to become agents of the love that is universal, and of a mercy whose generosity is limitless, unconfined by the artificial barricades which nations construct to justify their own failures and needless fears. And so we pray today for all men, women and children throughout the world who suffer want or war because of the greed, ambition and lust for power of those who will not share your gift of love, ignoring the cost to others and ultimately to themselves. At this point in time when we remember past conflicts and the terrible toll they have exacted, Turn the hearts of men and women, and those who profess to lead them, to a renewed longing for peace. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Now that once again, in the shadow of the pandemic, communal joy in your sacred spaces is denied to us, we pray for your church throughout the world that its light might continue to shine before men, so that they may see its good works and glorify you. We give thanks for all the many ways its servants have found to shine that light into the hearts of those condemned to loneliness and isolation by the threat and presence of a deadly virus, and have kept the hope which only you can offer, a light in our lives. We give thanks that we may in the coming weeks continue to find peace and succour through private prayer in our churches and for the hope that we may soon all meet again to rejoice in the true companionship of common worship. We pray for those who have cho chosen to lead us in our faith, for Archbishop Justin and Bishop Sarah and Graham and for our own clergy for Brian, Sam and Samuel, who have in so many ways, both old and new, kept the light of your love a light in the hearts of this parish. And especially do we pray for Samuel and Lily and their son born this past week. May their lives and his be richly blessed by your love. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for our world and for those who lead it. Guide them, Lord, out of a prison of personal pride towards a real understanding of the greater good and a renewed awareness that they are the servants of the people and not of their own selfish desires and ambitions. We pray for the people of the United States that they may heal their divisions and rediscover that balm of unity and generosity of spirit, which is the only path to true greatness. We pray also for all the people of the world where religion and nationalism have led to conflict, deprivation and death. In the darkness and uncertainty of the present time, we give you thanks, Lord, for all those who, blessed by your gifts of compassion and loving-kindness, have shared them with the communities they serve. For the doctors, health workers, carers, and all the unsung heroes in this country and around the world who have brought your love into the lives of the lonely, the isolated, and the ill. We thank you for the scientists around the world who have devoted all their energy, knowledge and dedication in a race against time and the virus so that we can escape from its prison and enjoy all the fullness of the life you gave once again. 
when that day dawns, give us the wisdom, we pray, to live it and to use the gift you have bestowed with new wisdom, a renewed love for your creation and care for all those with whom you share its gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who suffer from sickness or any other adversity, for those in this parish and for those who suffer alone and unknown, and for all who care for them. And especially do we pray for Ian Fraser, Ian Lowe, Louise Cummings, Alan Jones, Doreen Pugh, Emma Jellickman, Serena Fass, Alex Key, and Philip Scrope. And especially at this time of remembrance, we pray for those who have died, for those who mourn, those whose memory we hold in our hearts, and for those who are known to you alone. And especially do we remember Morton McConnell, Timothy Cole, John Jacobson, Jan Lane, David Armstrong, Bill Gammon, Sally Hodgson. Eternal rest grant to them, O Lord. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God give to you and all those whom you love his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.